SCP-701, The Hanged King's Tragedy. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. All materials relating to SCP-701 are to be kept in a triple-locked archive at storage site redacted. These items consist of the two currently extant copies of the 1640 Quarto, 27 copies of the 1965 Trade Paperback Edition, 10 copies of the 1971 hardcover printing, 21 floppy diskettes consisting of data seized from raids on Expunged, 1 SVHS video cassette tape designated SCP-701-19 redacted A, and 1 steel knife of unknown origin designated SCP-701-19 redacted B. In no time are any of these items to be removed from the room. Access to this area is to be heavily monitored. Absolutely no personnel whatsoever is to be granted access to the archive without express in-person permission of Drs. L, R, and J. Description. SCP-701, The Hanged King's Tragedy, is a Caroline-era revenge tragedy in five acts. Performances of the player associated with sudden psychotic and suicidal behavior among both observers and participants, as well as the, as the manifestation of a mysterious figure classified as SCP-701-1. Historical estimates place the number of lines claimed by the play at between and past 300 years. Performances of the Hanged King's Tragedy do not always end with an outbreak. Of the redacted number of performances, only redacted, 36.78%, have ended in SCP-701 events. According to historical records and investigation, these outbreaks generally follow the same pattern. One to two weeks, seven to 14 days prior to event. During dress rehearsal period, cast members will begin to spontaneously deviate from the published text of the play, rather than improvisation or gas associated with going off script. Said deviations will be both orderly and consistent, as if the actors were working off a new version of the script. The cast and production crew will seem unaware of any change, and, if it is brought to their attention, will state that the play has run that way from the beginning. Two to three hours prior to the event. The outbreak generally occurs during opening night or else at the production with the greatest planned attendance, generally falling within the first week after the play's opening. One to two hours before event. SCP-701-1 begins to appear on stage in the final act scene of Act 1 generally in the background or to the side of the main action. It may seem to enter or exit the stage area, but does not appear to ever enter the backstage or offstage area. It simply disappears when not on stage. The cast does not appear to notice or comment on SCP-701-1, at least at first. The event. SCP-701-1 appears fully on stage during the banquet scene, in Act 5, here it will be incorporated into the actions of the play as the Hanged King. The cast will either murder each other or commit suicide, sometimes using items that seem to appear spontaneously on stage. Rioting breaks out in the audience with viewers randomly attacking anyone in front of them, regardless of prior relationship. Following the event, if any of the audience members survive the initial outbreak, they may exit the performance space, in which case they will continue to engage in random or opportunistic violence. Victims will generally require sedation or restraint in the scenario. Normal personality will begin to return roughly 24 hours after the event. Surviving victims will generally exhibit signs consistent with traumatic experience. Some will have no recollection of the event. Others may be rendered permanently comatose or psychotic. For a typical study of an outbreak, see Incident Report SCP-701-19 Redacted-1. An analysis of events leading up to the last uncontained SCP-701 event in 19 Redacted during a high school drama performance in Redacted 
For more information on the play's published text, see document SCP-701-1640-B1. In short, SCP-701 is a self-evolving mimetic virus transmitted through unknown means through the text of the play. Dr. L has theorized that SCP-701 events may involve expunged. This hypothesis is consistent in spite of redacted levels detected via satellite in the vicinity of the 19 redacted incidents, indicating expunged. Foundation agents are Understanding orders to suppress any performance or publication of SCP-701 whenever found or detected. Despite our best efforts to the contrary, however, the play remains freely available online, sometimes under different titles. All attempts to detect or isolate the origin of these copies have failed. Suppression of the play's publication has generally been successful, with most copies of the 1971 scholarly edition destroyed before distribution. Nonetheless, copies of the 1965 trade paperback turn up with some regularity in both college and high school libraries. Agents are to obtain or otherwise destroy these items whenever possible. History. The first known publication of the Hang King's Tragedy was as a quarto dated 1640, the play's author is not listed. The publisher, one William Cook, disappeared from historical records soon after. Strangely, the text does not appear in the stationer's register. The first known SCP-701 event recurred in 18... <laughs> ...performance of the play in... ...essay. <laughs> Other significant events include the 19... <laughs> Performance at the small theater in uh, 1964 performance at the University of Nemeron Zilk. The 19 at University. First SCP 701 event successfully suppressed by the Foundation. The 19 performance by a student group in Nemeras, California, the 1999 adaptation by the Shitter Broadcasting Corporation, and successfully shut down by the Foundation before broadcast, and the 19 incident in Ohio, United States of America. Designated SCP 701 19 redacted 1. Publication history Original 1640 quarto, all known copies in Foundation custody. 1733 folio edition, republished 1790. 1813 Cambridge University Press edition. 1965 trade paperback edition. 1971 hardcover edition. Agents should know that copies of the play have often been misfiled under different titles or spellings of the title. Furthermore, photocopies of the 1965 text have been found in circulation throughout college theater departments in the continental United States and in the United Kingdom. Additional, given the high probability of expunged in my mind, I again recommend that SCP-701 be upgraded to Keter class. The SCP-701 mimetic virus may very well be the forefront of an invasion scenario. Furthermore, expunged. Dr. L-123-711-6060. None of the current information we have on SCP-701 indicates an XK class scenario. Until we have additional data, classification will remain at Euclid. It's facts, Doctor. The cat's been long out of the bag on this one, and in this line of business, we consider ourselves lucky if we only lose a hundred or so people every ten years. 05-123-719760 Document SCP-701-1640-B-1 
The following is a summary of the published text of the Hanged King's Tragedy, classified SCP-701, prepared by Dr. J from a copy of the 1640 Quarto in Foundation Custody. Dramatis Personae, Gonzalo, King of Trincalo, Isabella, Queen of Trincalo, formerly the wife of Serfozo, the murdered king, now married to Gonzalo, Antonio, a minor noble, Francisco, Antonio's servant, the Duke of Sortino, Alinda, daughter of the Duke, Petruchicio, a noble lord allied with Gonzalo, Lodovico, a servant of Gonzalo, Corneri, a priest, Beatrice, a servant of the queen, a courtesan, a palace guardsman, the ambassador of Milan, the ambassador of Florence, and the ambassador of Alagata. Setting. The play is set in the kingdom of Trinculu, probably a misspelling of Trinicaria, another name for Sicily, in the capital city of Serco, another name for the city of Syracuse. As the play opens, Serfoso, the king of Trinculu, has died, supposedly from natural causes, while on retreat from the court. The nobility of Trinculu gathers in the capital for the coronation of the new king. Serfoso's younger brother, Gonzalo, who has also married Servoso's queen, Isabella. Despite the text's reference to contemporary Italian city-states such as Florence and Milan, much of the play's setting is obviously pure fantasy. There were never any kings of Sicily com comparable to Gonzalo and Servoso, and the capital of the historical kingdom of Sicily was Palmero, not Syracuse. The author may have chosen to move the play's events to Syracuse, to, due to that city's historical association with tyranny. There is also no record of any country or play known by the name Alagata, a mysterious but apparently powerful state that plays a significant role in the plot. It may be intended as a reference to one of the Muslim states or cities on the Mediterranean coast, such as Tunis or Algiers. Plot summary. The plot of The Hanged King's Tragedy bears a marked resemblance to many earlier plays of the same genre, including Shakespeare's Hamlet and Titus Andronicus. In fact, past investigations into SCP-701 events have noted that The Hanged King's Tragedy was often chosen for production as a less violent alternative to the two plays mentioned. The two murders in the SCP-701 text can be construed as occurring offstage, and the implication of cannibalism in Act 3 can be easily cut from the script. Act 1, the play opens during Gonzalo's coronation. Gonzalo opens with a toast to the assembled nobility, then departs the stage. Drunk on the wine, Isabella confesses to some of the courtiers left on stage that Servoso did not die in his sleep as reported. Instead, while on retreat in the countryside, Servoso was fed a sleeping potion by Isabella, the murder by Gonzalo and his supporters. As a final show of disrespect, the conspirators hanged the king like a common criminal from a tree. Isabella goes on to proclaim that Antonio, a minor noble visiting the king's court for the first time, is actually her and Servoso's son and rightful heir to the throne. Isabella collapses and is taken off stage by her servants. Francisco asks Antonio if he believes the Queen's story. Antonio makes light of the situation and they exit. Back in Antonio's rented lodgings, Francisco attempts to barter with a courtesan. Antonio enters the stage, clearly in shock. He reports that while off stage, he saw the ghost of Servoso, who confirmed Antonio's parentage and the Queen's description of his death. Act 2. Gonzalo, having learned of Isabella's confession, consults with his fellow conspirators. Ludovico confirms that at least three people witnessed the Queen's breakdown. The Duke of Sortino, his daughter Alinda, and a priest named Corneri. Gonzalo immediately begins to plan the murder or capture of the three in order to cover up the truth. He orders Isabella to be locked up in a convent where the story put out that the Queen is mad. Isabella, uncharacteristically, meekly accepts Gonzalo's judgment. 
usurper then exits, having an appointment with the ambassador from Halagata. Back in their lodgings to, in the city, Francisco brings Antonio news of the queen's imprisonment. Together, they begin to plan their revenge. Act 3. Petrucusio and Gonzalo invite Sortino to dinner. They kill him and order the palace cooks to prepare the corpse as a stew. Gonzalo orders Elinda, who witnessed the murder, to be locked up in the convent. Antonio fakes insanity in order to gain admittance to the convent. Warning of Antonio's coming, Isabella and her loyal surface, Beatrice, and prepare to murder him using a draught of poison. Antonio sees through their plan and orders Isabella to drink the poison, killing her. Meanwhile, Francisco gets lost within the convent and winds up freeing Alinda from her cell by accident. Act 4. In the palace, Gonzalo reports to Lodovico that he has, in exchange for an unstated tribute, obtained a powerful and tasteless poison from the ambassador of Alagata. Gonzalo plans to poison the stew made from the Duke of Sortino's corpse and feed it to the court thus ensuring the suppression of the truth. Lodovico leaves the stage to carry out the usurper's plan. Gonzalo then has a brief moment of conscience. In a soliloquy, he describes the regret he carries for his sins, but is nonetheless unable to deviate from the plan he has set. Meanwhile, Francisco introduces Alinda to Antonio, all three having escaped the convent. Alinda describes her mother her father's murder in grisly terms. Antonio promises to marry her and make her his queen as soon as his revenge is complete. He then leaves to obtain a blade which, with which he plans to kill Gonzalo. There is a comedic interlude between a palace guard and Corneri, a buffoonish priest. At the end of the scene, Lodovico enters and bids Corneri to follow him. The priest is not seen on stage again. Act 5. The guests arrive at Gonzalo's banquet. Gonzalo once again offers a toast, this time to the ambassadors of the foreign nations who are present. The meal is served, however, before it can begin. Antonio enters, bearing a signed confession he obtained from Petrucusio offstage, which includes the details of Saravoso's murder and proof of Antonio's lineage. Gonzalo is deposed by outraged courtiers rather than murder him. However, Antonio instead decides to spare the usurper and let him accept exile to a monastery. He then orders Francisco to start making plans for his marriage to Alinda. Play ends with a dance staged by the courtiers. SCP-701 Events The produced form of the play that occurs during SCP-701 events contains several deviations from the text as published. For a typical example of these deviations, see Incident Report 701-19-1. Incident Report SCP-701-19 Redacted-1. SCP involved SCP-701. Date redacted. It's in the 1900s. Location expunged. Report prepared by Drs. R and J on content of SCP-701-19 Redacted-A. SCP-701-19-A is an 887mm by 103mm by 25mm SVHS video cassette tape recovered by investigators from the scene of the incident. A performance of SCP-701 at school in was found in a destroyed consumer-grade camcorder, which was apparently recording the performance from a vantage point within the audience. It is the only surviving record of the event. We see the 701 archives for the full transcript of the recording. In order to compare the identified deviations during a SCP-701 event with the actual plot of the established text, See in document SCP-701-1640-B-1. At 0 hours, 0 minutes, and 0 seconds, tape begins. 
at 3 minutes and 10 seconds, house lights go down. At 5 minutes, 12 seconds, curtain rises. The play begins as published with Gonzalo's coronation speech. At 10 minutes and 21 seconds, a possible sighting of SCP-701-1 during Isabella's ravings, an anomalous shadow not belonging to one of the cast members, shows up along the back wall of the set. At 10 minutes and 24 seconds, shadow disappears. At 23 minutes and 15 seconds, first deviation from the text. Rather than the dialogue between Francisco and the courtesan, the curtain drops and comes back up on a bare stage. Antonio enters from stage right. At 23 minutes and 24 seconds, first indirect sighting of SCP-701-1. The shadow of a figure seems to appear on the back wall from stage right. Antonio stops in place and acts surprised. The shadow disappears. Antonio begins a long soliloquy confirming that he now believes Isabella's story. Dr. J notes that while the soliloquy is in style of the rest of the play and seems to be accurate Caroline-era dialogue, Antonio's speech in the scene does not exist in the original text. At 24 minutes and 12 seconds, curtain drops. At 24 minutes and 51 seconds, curtain rises on Francisco and the courtesan. Antonio returns. The play continues as scripted. At 31 minutes and 14 seconds, first direct sighting of SCP-701-1. It enters and stands at the edge of stage left towards the end of Act 2, Scene 1. At 32 minutes and 17 seconds, Gonzalo's dialogue concludes, as scripted, with the mention of an appointment with the ambassador from Alagata. He exits stage left, SCP-701-1, seems to turn and follow him as the lights go down. At 38 minutes and 13 seconds, second sighting of SCP-701-1 during Act 3, Scene 1. It appears at the edge of stage right as Gonzalo and Petruccio order Sortino. The scene concludes with Gonzalo ordering his cooks to prepare the corpse as a stew. Scripts recovered from the scene indicate that this section had been cut in rehearsal. At 51 minutes and 11 seconds, third sighting of SCP-701-1 appears close to stage left as Antonio kills Isabella. At 1 hour, 9 minutes, and 12 seconds, fourth sighting, SCP-701-1 enters with Gonzalo at the beginning of Act 4, Scene 1, and follows him throughout the scene. The scene also contains two key moments. First, Gonzalo seems to nod to SCP-701-1 when he mentions the Ambassador of Alagata. This is the first time a cast member has seemed to indicate SCP-701-1's presence. Second, the scene ends with a deviation from the text, whereas the scripted speech at the end of Act 4, Scene 1 ends with Gonzalo considering his own moral inequity. Gonzalo here seems to be more concerned that his tribute will be sufficient for the ambassador. The lights go down. At 1 hour, 21 minutes, and 15 seconds, fifth sighting, SCP-701-1 enters stage left at the end of Act 4, Scene 2, as Antonio leaves to secure a blade for his coup. Rather than exiting, Antonio stops in front of SCP-701-1, who hands him a long dagger. This is believed to be the first appearance of the item classified SCP-701-19 blank dash B. Note that there is no mention of the item in the prop list or the other re records maintained by the production. SCP-701-1 and Antonio depart the stage together. At 1 hour and 32 minutes and 41 seconds, sixth sighting. SCP-701-1 appears on stage left as Corneri and Lodovico exit. At 1 hour 35 minutes 10 seconds, the lights come up in Act 5, Scene 1. The banquet scene begins as scripted. At 1 hour 40 minutes and 52 seconds, Antonio enters, bearing a piece of parchment. 
Here, the textual deviations begin in earnest. Rather than the parchment being Petruchio's confession as scripted, Antonio instead describes it as an invoice from the ambassador of Alagata, proving that Gonzalo owes more tribute than he intends to pay. At 1 hour 41 minutes and 42 seconds, SCP-701-1 enters at this point from stage right. The entire cast seems to perceive it. Gonzalo stands up, curses as an aside to the audience, and runs for stage left. The rest of the cast, including Alinda and Francisco, who enter from stage left, physically restrain Gonzalo and drag him back onto the stage. SCP-701-1, meanwhile, moves to the center of the stage, where it stands in front of Gonzalo's throne. At 1 hour, 43 minutes, and 8 seconds, a noose is dropped onto the stage from below. The cast force Gonzalo onto the noose as he begins to curse in Italian, and in one place, possibly Latin. The noose is drawn taut, and the cast drops Gonzalo as he begins to asphyxiate. At 1 hour, 43 minutes, and 32 seconds, Antonio speaks. With this, the tribute is paid. In full, it is paid. The actor takes SCP-701-19 blank-B, the dagger, and draws it across Gonzalo's stomach, spilling his intestines across the stage. At 1 hour, 44 minutes, and 4 seconds, Belinda takes the dagger from Antonio. She speaks, With this fool's blood, it is the hanged king's. She cuts Antonio's throat. At 1 minute, 40, 1 hour, 45 minutes, and 31 seconds, ropes drop from the roof of the stage, a noose for each cast member. The cast assembles underneath them. Alinda takes position next to SCP-701-1. At 1 hour, 46 minutes, 12 seconds, Alinda. With this, our blood, it is the hanged king's. The cast hang themselves. At 1 hour, 47 minutes and 33 seconds, SCP-701-1 moves through the hanging corpses and to front center stage. At 1 hour, 47 minutes and 41 seconds, the stage lights cut out. At 1 hour, 47 minutes and 46 seconds, sounds of screaming and physical violence around the camera. At 1 hour, 48 minutes and 22 seconds, loud sound, most likely the camera being knocked over. At 1 hour, 49 minutes and 1 second, the camera is destroyed. Tape ends.